So a lot of people have strong opinions on whether you should keep your horde base and your crafting base separate, but I decided I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. Welcome to the Echo Craft. This is a modular design based off of the Echo Box that allows us to connect and disconnect the horde and the crafting areas. For reference, here's the Echo Box, which was a combined horde and crafting base. And here's what the Echo Craft looks like when you connect a horde base to it. The two structures are linked by a corridor, which can effectively be turned on or off, giving you the convenience of one base and the safety of two. In this video, I'll give you block by block instructions on how to build the Echo Craft, and then look for a follow-up on the horde base that you see attached to it here. If you build this in your world, please come and post it in my Discord. First off, I love seeing what you do with my designs, and second, I might incorporate some of the changes you made. So with that, let's jump on into the build. Let's start with how much real estate you're going to need to build this. If you're just looking to build the Echo Craft, you're going to need a spot 27 by 10. And that's the area that you see in red. Now, if you're going to add on that whore base that I'm going to show you in a future video, then you're going to need a full 37 by 30. In terms of material, you can use whatever you like, but you're going to end up using around 600 blocks with the following configuration that I've got shown here. Now, don't worry about writing all these down. As I go through the tutorial, I will call out the individual blocks as we use each one of them. In addition to those shape requirements, you're going to need four double doors and one hatch. So before we jump in, I want to explain that the areas in red are where the base actually touches the foundation slash ground. So the red rectangle area to the left is where the ramp starts, and then the other six squares are going to be where we start building pillars. The bottoms and tops of the pillars will be created using wedge 60 corner tip cube one quarters. So we'll go ahead and finish those off in each of the square areas. And to help with pillar placement, there's six blocks between each of the pillars on the exterior, and then four blocks between the ramp pillar and the other set of five pillars. So once you've created the base of the pillar, you're going to be using cube one quarter blocks and going up four each in the corners. So one, two, three, and four. And you'll continue this rotating to each of the four corners until you have what is one central pillar that's actually made of four separate blocks. Now, before we add the tops of the pillars, we're going to build out some quick scaffolding that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. This is the reason I always love to have a stack of frame shapes whenever I'm building. Doesn't matter how you set these up here, as long as you get access to all the pillar tops. So to create the tops, we're going to take the remaining wedge 60 corner tip cube one quarters. And just as we place them in the bottom, we're going to flip that upside down and then we'll replicate this on all the remaining pillars. Once this is done, we'll frame out the bottom floor and the foundation of the base. Here's a quick list for this section and I'll call them out as we go along. We're going to start building out the sides first using cube one half ramp tips. We'll skip the quarter and instead place one block over and then we'll carry this the whole way across. Once we're done on this side, we'll repeat the same thing on the other side, just rotating the block by 180 degrees. For the front of the base, we're going to come in two from the sides with the same block and on the back side of the base will come in three from each side back on the front of the base on the inside we're going to use cube corner bevel blocks we're going to place these with the bevel facing the outside corner and then sandwiched between those will be two wedge 60 offset blocks with the smallest end facing outward now that we have the exterior of the base all framed out we can fill the rest in here with simple cubes Make sure that when you get to the back side of the base that you leave the two blocks between the cube one half ramp tips open. That's where we're going to put the ladders going down. You can use whatever ladder types you want. I use scaffolding ladders here because I thought it worked with the base aesthetic, but functionally it makes no difference. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and pull out all the scaffolding below. And with that out of the way, we'll be ready to frame up the sides of the base. We'll do this by building out the corners first using wedge 60 tip corner base and top blocks. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create an hourglass. So we'll put the base blocks on the bottom and you'll make sure that you line them up so that they fit flush against the bottom here like this. And then once you have that first set down, we're going to go back around with the tip blocks. And when placing these, I find it easiest just to hold down R and click copy rotation. That just ensures that you're putting these in the same direction. Once you've placed the base and the tops all the way around, you're going to do this inverted so that you do the top and then the base, except for you're going to flip it upside down. I find the easiest way to do this is to stand on top and then jump in place. Now, just be careful because it is very easy to launch yourself off the side of the base doing this. Once you finish with the corner tops, you'll flip over and finish it off with the corner bases. Once these are done, we're ready to fill in the sides of the base. Here's all the blocks we're going to be using for this. Do the front and the back last, but instead we're going to do the two sides because those are identical. And we'll start off using cube one half blocks. And we're going to make a three by three grid essentially on each side, leaving the center portion open because that's where the window is going to go. When you're doing this, you can either jump up and place these as I'm doing now, or more intelligently, you can actually just face towards the corner blocks that you placed in 
and use those to place them against. Once these are placed, you're gonna put a pair of wedge narrow lows right across the front here, and that's gonna give that beveled in look that you get when it comes up against the window. And speaking of windows, we're good to add those. We're gonna use window store corner full, but honestly, you can mix it up and use whatever window you like to kind of change up the appearance. Once we're done with the right side there, we're just gonna replicate the same thing over on the left side. On the front side of the base, we're gonna carry that cube corner beveled up three more blocks that we started with before. So one, two, and three. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And again, you can just copy the rotation from the one below, just so that you're making sure it's facing the same direction that you want. Once these are done, you're gonna fill in the two sides with cube one half blocks, six on each side. And then we're ready to go to the back. Again, we're gonna be using cube corner beveled. So we're gonna go one, two, and three up, and then we're gonna repeat that on the other side here. And just like on the front, we're gonna fill those empty portions in there with cube one half blocks. Next, on the inside of the entryway, we're gonna be adding wedge narrow tips, and we're gonna have them so that they angle with the lowest part at the bottom, and then kind of flare upward. And then above those, we'll be placing cube 0 0.25 meter blocks. And we'll just line those straight up like that, copy rotation. And then lastly, we're gonna use arch inside corner 02. I'm gonna show you from this perspective so you can see kind of how they're sitting up there. But ultimately when they fit together, the backside should be flush up against the wall and the side facing outward should create that crescent moon shape. Now we're gonna add the top layers of the walls as well as the spires on the four corners. We'll do this starting off with adding a ladder in the corner. We're facing towards the back of the base right now. And we're gonna place a ladder one block back on the left side of the wall. And then we'll use that to jump up and place another ladder right on top of that. Next, we're going to place a pair of cube one half ramp tips right above the windows facing outward and then do the same thing on the opposite side over the windows. After that, the majority of this top layer is wedge narrow low blocks. Place this so the bottom edge sits flush with the half blocks below and then tapers in. When we get to the front, the pattern is going to change a little bit. We're going to have three wedge narrow lows on each side. And then between those, we're just gonna have two basic cubes. Now we're ready to add the spires in the four corners. So starting in the bottom, we'll do a wedge narrow low corner. And you wanna make sure that it sits flush up against the two sides there. Then above it, we'll put a wedge narrow middle corner and then finally a wedge narrow high corner. And each time you're gonna wanna make sure that you're copying the rotation so that they all sit right. Now we're good to go ahead and place the roof on. So here are all the parts and pieces that we're gonna be using to build the roof. Start in the four corners, placing pillar 0.5 M center plate 01. And these we're essentially placing in here so that we can add lights in later and make it look like it naturally fits within the context of the building. Next, we're gonna get this tray ceiling effect by using wedge tip stairs all around the edges. And then we're gonna continue that effect using pull plates going all the way around. Now I forgot how dark it can get inside of buildings in Alpha 21. So we're gonna go ahead and slap some lanterns up. Typically what I would recommend is putting in light bulbs here as soon as you have power capacity, but otherwise these work great. Now we're ready to add the skylight in. And to do this, we're gonna create a lip. The way we do this is by putting window store corner empty blocks in the four corners angled as you see here. And then right next to them, we'll put in window store one-sided empty blocks. And we'll just rotate those until they fit like that. And then we'll go the rest of the way around. Now that the skylight has a platform, we're gonna place window ramp outside corner full blocks in each of the four corners. And then in between each of those, we'll be putting window ramp four-sided full blocks. After that, we'll be using the window store corner full blocks, same as we used on the side windows, except for this time, we're just gonna orient it so that it's facing up. Just like with the side windows, you can put whatever type of window block you want to up here. For me, I just wanted to let in as much light as possible for this build. After the skylight's done, we're gonna ring the whole exterior with industrial fence top spiked blocks. And then we're just gonna place a quick hatch on top of the ladder. So now the main crafting area of the base is essentially created and we are good to go other than the way to get in and out with a motorcycle. 
So before we jump into building a ramp, let's talk about the different incline grades that we have in, in Seven Days to Die. So you've got a basic ramp that goes up one block over the course of one block. You have the wedge 60 tip and wedge 60 combo, which goes up one block over two blocks. And then you have the wedge narrow, which is a four stage one, two, three, four, because you've got wedge narrow tip, low, mid and high. So it goes up over a course of four. Now, the advantage of this one is your motorcycle doesn't clip on it when it hits the front tip of it. So when we designed this ramp here, what we wanted to do was have a gradual incline that increased in grade and then finally got to the full 45 degree that you have on a ramp. So that is the idea behind this. So we're gonna replicate this over on our new base here. So we'll look back at that one as a reference. And again, we're gonna start off with the narrow set. So we're gonna use wedge narrow tips at the front. And then right behind that, we'll have wedge narrow low blocks. And that's gonna give us our nice gradual ascent. And because the narrow set is four blocks, when it hits to the second block, it'll hit at the same level as a wedge 60 block. So we can put in a wedge 60 here and that'll meet flush up against that. And then we're gonna put a set of cubes in the bottom here. So we'll just put four cubes right across the bottom. And then we're gonna carry the wedge 60 series for a little bit. So we'll do another pair of wedge 60 tips. And then right behind that, we'll have a pair of wedge 60s. And now we are ready to transition to ramps. So starting off, we're gonna flip ramps upside down and we're just gonna go back and forth. So we'll put one set on the bottom, one set on the top, and we will repeat this about four more times, it looks like. The easy way to know when you're done is that as long as you started off with the first 16 ramps, you will use all 16 of those through the path of setting this up. When you back up and look at this, what you're gonna wanna see is the first two blocks are gonna be the narrow series. The next three blocks will be the wedge 60 series. And then after that, you'll have the ramps that are going 45 degrees and you'll carry those up until all 16 are used. At that point in time, we're gonna switch back to a wedge 60 and we're gonna continue that same angle trajectory going up. Make sure it's advanced rotated and just angle it up like that. And then we'll wanna go ahead and add a wedge 60 tip to the end of that. Now that it's sitting flush with the pillar, all we gotta do is head upstairs here and put one last set of wedge 60 tips and wedge 60s leading up to a set of four cubes. And then we have our entrance way done. And we just need to add in the corridor that connects the base over here to the pillar itself. So to do this next part is a little tricky and I've lost a few doors in testing out trying to do this. So make sure you put yourself a quick scaffolding bridge across here. It'll make your life a little bit easier. And we're gonna start at the entrance using wedge narrow tips. And if you think of it kind of funneling your motorcycle into the base, that's the best way to think of it. So we're gonna frame on top of the pillars. And then once we have these first two done, we'll go ahead and connect to those and we're gonna have them angled downward. And the whole idea of this is that there's gonna be doors that open and close below here, which essentially shuts this lane on and off. And if you didn't have these blocks here, the zombies would view the edge of the doors as an optional place to run. So now that we have those in place, we're gonna pull the first four of the frame blocks that we have up here, and then we should be able to place a door. Now when you place these, make sure that the frames are facing towards the very, very front of the base and the very, very back. So if we rotate this one around, you'll wanna see that the frame is facing here. And that way, when we open both of them, there is no frame in the center allowing the zombies to jump to. Now let's go ahead and close these up. So these provide a platform. This is where your motorcycle will drive across. And we'll go ahead and raise these walls up a little bit on the sides. To do this, we're simply gonna close this in with cube 0.25 meter blocks. There should be eight of these on each side. And uh, ignore the fact that I started off only putting six on each side. That was just a mistake on my part. Next, we're gonna put a pair of wedge 60 offsets with the small side facing upward. And then we're gonna taper down even more with a pair of wedge narrow low blocks. And then we'll just basically finish everything off with those cube 0.25 meters, carrying this out to the end, and then bringing the wedge narrow tips up to meet it at the top. Now we just need to head inside the base here, and we're gonna go ahead and put a door here, which is just one more layer of protection. And then we're gonna go with cube corner bevels up there, 
which will give kind of an angled entrance coming in. And then we just need to put a door on the back of the base. And then we're really down to the crafting layout. Now I will show you how I set up the base here, but obviously you can tweak it however you would possibly want. I did make kind of a frame around the door so that I could set a couple cement mixers up top. It just kind of framed out the room a little bit better. A couple storages here. We've got the bars on the side for the motorcycle parking, and then also a couple of campfires right under the window, and that's about it. So that is the Echo Craft, folks. Like I said, I'll do a follow-on video showing you the horde base that attaches to this, but I hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one. Hey, folks, it's Echo here. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I'm going to have the horde base associated with this coming out in about a week. If you happen to build this base in your world, please drop a picture down in my Discord. The links are all below, but I really enjoy seeing what the community does with these builds that I put out there. So would love to see those. As always, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters over here. Thank you so much. Much love to y'all folks. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Cheers.